Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm John Brown and in this video, I'm gonna go over some questions that you've asked me on Instagram. So I took a screenshot of all the questions you guys asked me because with Instagram, it disappears after 24 hours. So I'm gonna answer the first 20 out of all the potential ones. I had over 100 questions. So if I don't get to yours this time, I'm very sorry. So question number one, how many hours per day do you spend composing slash practicing? Well, the answer varies, like some days I don't get the chance to play my guitar at all and then other days I will play consistently for 10 hours. I'll sit in front of my computer, write loads of music. So it really, really varies. Um, between practicing and composing, I definitely spend a lot more time composing, but with practicing, I tend to focus them on that more when I'm going on tour or something like that. But I do spend, I would say, between one or two hours a day playing guitar, on average. So question number two, what do you do to keep motivated making new stuff when you have writer's block? And honestly, I can't answer this question properly because it varies depending on who you are, but I find that I will write music when I have a thesis or a theme to write to. And that is why, for example, the Manuensis was a concept album, Gnosis was a concept album, and both Flux Conduct records were also concept to albums because it's so much easier to write music when you have an idea to write to. It's like you're writing music to uh, the way that a word would like create an emotion within you. And that is just, for me, so much easier to write music to. So that is how I would get out of writer's block. I just scour Wikipedia, check out some weird words and hope that it sort of sparks something in my brain. So question number three. Thoughts on neck through versus bolt on. And this is talking about the construction of a guitar. And for me personally, I prefer bolt on. And the reason why is because I find that bolt on guitars have a snappier attack, whereas through neck guitars are a little bit more smooth. So if I wanted to play a lead guitar, I would choose a neck through guitar, whereas rhythm, I think, works better with bolt on. And as I am predominantly a rhythm player, I prefer bolt on. So question number four, thoughts on Australian heavy music. Now, my favorite band is Carnival. I love Dead Letter Circus, Cog. Uh, there's, there's a number of great bands from Australia. Sleep Makes Waves, um, North Lane. Obviously, a lot of people love Parkway Drive. Uh, Thy Art is Murder. Loads of other bands. Um, so yeah, I think Australia has a really good diverse um, range of heavy music and as I said before Carnival are my favorite band so Australian heavy music has a, a real solid place in my heart so next question favorite non-metal artist and there's there's a few of them that I wouldn't really be able to pick between um, it's definitely between Hans Zimmer or Michael Jackson for me both are really great in the fields that they chose to do So next question, question number six. Favorite song to play live? So my favorite monument song to play live, well, it's a really tough question. Um, I the Creator is obviously very fun just to see how crazy the crowd goes. Um, but one of the, my favorite tracks that I've played is actually Gin. And I think it's because it's short, it's heavy, and it's just fun. And also another one actually, in fact, actually, this is my answer. My favorite track to play live is Saga City because it goes from being really beautiful melodically to the ending, which is just absolutely disgusting. It's a shame that we don't play that song live very often. Which Hughes and Kettner do you prefer and why? The GM40, that's the Grandmeister 40, or the Black Spirit 200? I want one but can only afford one at the moment. <clears throat> so. Both are completely different from each other. Obviously the Black Spirit is the new technology which isn't tube, digital or modular. It's a, it's a new type of analog technology. They couldn't really explain it to me what it was. And then obviously the Grandmeister is fully tubed so it totally depends on what kind of thing that you really want to go for. I mean, the Black Spirit 200 is very, very good um, at, I think emulating is the wrong word but it does feel like a tube amp. It feels like you're playing through the biggest set of tubes, you know, KE88s or something like that. It just sounds amazing. Whereas the Grandmeister is also amazing. So it's a very, very hard question. I would say that if you want to have more diversity, I would probably go with the Black Spirit. 
Um, it's a little bit tighter for metal, but the Grandmeister 40s we used in Australia on the tour last month, and they did an absolutely stellar job, so you can't really go wrong with either. How tired is your right hand after a live show? And truth be told, it is actually completely worn after the live show. The time when it's tired is between the first and the second song, depending on what we play. Like when we start with the eight string material, like Origin of Escape or uh, and Degenerate, um, it's a really good warm up because those songs aren't quite as complicated as some of the other ones in terms of the down picking aggression. But when we start on A Wall and then go into either Crater, it's a little bit of a nightmare. Um, so once I've got to the end of I Crater or end of um, what was the next song in the set, Leviathan, which is also horrible to play, by the end of that I'm completely warm. So then it doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> Would you rather marshmallow teeth or jelly fingers? I think I'd rather go for the marshmallow teeth. Drink soup for the rest of my life. At least then I can still play guitar. Question number 10. Best sounding budget studio monitors. So for me, I would probably go with um, a set of monitors that I actually have here, which is the Yamaha MSP5s. You can pick them up stupidly cheap secondhand. They sound great. Uh, well, actually, they sound disgusting, and that's what's great about them, because if you get a mix to sound good on them, it's going to sound great and translate everywhere. Um, I actually mixed the Flux Conduct album, Yet Sahara, on those monitors, and I think it just translated really well. Um, and another thing that I would suggest getting is the Sonarworks plugin, which basically analyzes your surroundings and levels off your monitors so they're as flat as possible. And that, honestly, has made a huge difference over the past couple of months for my mixes. Question number 10. Do you use an Axe FX3? Do you follow me? Favorite carnival song. I mean, for me, it's got to be a song off Sound Awake. Um, but there's so many good songs on that record um, that it's hard to pinpoint just one. But I'm going to have to go with the first song that I heard off that record just because it's I listened to it on repeat. Didn't even bother with the rest of the album when I first heard it. And that is Simple Boy. So it's got such a cool groove to it. It's just absolutely fantastic. But then Change Part 2 is also on that record. Dead Man. Oh, there's so many good tracks on that record. I think it is actually all I know. No. <laughs> I, I can't answer that question. Everything's great. Can I just say Sound Awake? Does that count as one song? <laughs> So question number 12, is it possible that we are going to hear instrumental fell silent someday? What is it with you guys and your obsession with instrumental? Like, leave that record, it's 10 years old, let's just, let's just, let's just leave it. Question number 13, where's Atlas part two? It's with the record label and we didn't feel that it worked with this album. It sounds like the amanuensis and this sounds like Mises, so we decided to leave it off. Even though the song is rad, I really, really like it. I mean, it's just a song, guys. Come on. There'll be plenty more of those in the future. Your favorite riff from Phronesis? Mm. I think it is probably... Mm, that's a hard question as well. If I didn't like the riff, it wouldn't be on the record. So, all of them? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm just listening through now, just going through everything in my head, trying to work out. I mean, if I had to pick one riff, it would be the riff in the watch, the one before the second chorus. Um, it's just, a, it's just a, I, I just, I just love that riff. It's just really fluid and really awesome. Loads of slides in it, you know. Question number 14, dat right hand, I need to learn dat. Well, I've got the thing for you, mate, riffhard.com. Go join it. It's got literally everything dissected from my songwriting, my down picking, everything. And you can learn it from there. And it's cheaper than a one hour lesson from pretty much anywhere in the Western world. And that's for a whole month of membership. So. Go to riffhard.com and become the guitar player you were born to be. Have I sold it? What's your favorite meal? So 
funnily enough, me and my girl were talking about this earlier today. Like, if we were stranded on a desert island, what what three meals would you take with you? So, for me, because I'm a, I can only narrow this down to three. So first things for first things first um, would be chicken penang, which is a Thai dish made with coconut. It has to be with coconut rice. If it doesn't have coconut rice, the meal's gone. Um, the other two meals are Persian. One is gourmet sabzi, which is like a stew made with spinach and coriander, slow cooked lamb with dried limes in it, and it is absolutely incredible. Nima's family introduced me to that, so thank you, Nima. And also to this next one, which is kebab kabuda, um, which is um, marinated like beef and lamb mixed together with limes and sugar or something. I can't remember the exact formula for it. Um, and that has to be with the garlic yogurt. Again, meals ruined. And also has to have a grilled onion and rice. Yes, question number 16. Did you try a telecast of your style of playing? I would love to see you play on one. I actually love the Telecaster. When I was a when I was a kid, I used to hate the shape of it, but the way that it sounds is just very, very unique. Um, maximum twang, you know, it's got a lot of twang. Um, last time Ollie was here, actually, he had a Richie Cutson telly with him that was phenomenal, but the thing wouldn't stay in tune. Um, but every telly that I've played, I've always really enjoyed. It has this openness to it that you can't really get from any other guitar. So maybe one day. What's the smallest fly rig you could get away with that still achieves your sound? Um, I think the best thing for this is what we were using on the Australia tour, which was the Hughes and Kentner Grandmeister 40 head, which is this tiny little head that weighs seven kilos, and then the Line 6 Helix. So the Helix will be controlling effects before and after the amp. The amp is all the sound minus the, you know, the sparkly clean sound that we use for the first two records. Um, and you can get away, I can get away with just using just those two things, but I think I'm going to start using the Black Spirit 200 because it weighs a lot less. It's only three kilos, so it's going to reduce the rig down quite a lot. So question number 17, any chance of a fell silent reunion? I mean, at this point, I really don't see it happening. I mean, um, everyone's everyone's doing their own thing, you know, Apple's got Tesseract, Noddy plays in Heart Coward, Joe um, does producing and songwriting, I mean, he wrote um, some music with Zayn Malik. Um, Max works on film sets, as far as I know. Um, Nima, um, Nima does like some some farming. I can't remember the exact word for it. Um, so yeah, I mean we're all doing different things. I don't really see it happening. Are you okay? Um, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. How to make money in music? So Misha's been covering this recently. Um, so if you go onto his Facebook profile, then he's been doing a thread with loads of different answers to this. I mean, that is a really good place to start. Okay, so next question, um, another fell silent question. Um, what was your rig slash setup on the Hidden Words? So the Hidden Words was um, all Pod XT Pro, as far as I know, that's the question for Ackle. Um, but as far as my live rig goes, I had an Engel Invader 100. The Pod XT Pro for my clean sounds. I had a Digitech 2112, 2120, sorry, artist for the effects through the amp, an angle 4x12 cab, an Ibanez 277XL guitar, and a very rare Ibanez 2127X, which was um, the seven string with the double edged bridge, which has the piezo pickup in it, which I sold to the guitar player of Cradle of Filth. James, I really, really want that guitar back. Um, but that was my rig for. Uh, false art. And before the Invader, I had an Engel Savage Special Edition. Why using a pinky while down picking? So originally, this came about because of the song Immerse by Fell Silent. And I knew with these chords during the chorus that um, we played five of the strings and, and missed off the two high strings. So I would actually wrap my little finger under the two high strings to mute them both. And then all of a sudden I, I, I found that while I was headbanging, it would give me an anchor point on where I was, so I wouldn't actually lose where I was for the strings. Um, so that's kind of how it started, and I've just found that it works for me. I mean, John Petrucci does it with his third finger where he rests the, his finger on the body for an anchor point when he's playing leads. So I think it's pretty similar in that approach, and I subliminally probably picked it up from that. 
So any of the songs on the new record recorded with one of your P90 guitars. Technically Atlas Part 2, and we'll stop right there. Uh, next question is, what is your typical post-processing on guitars? And honestly, it's very minimal. It's uh, an EQ, a tiny little bit of compression, um, just to cut off the transients. Um, sometimes I add um, an oral exciter to it, like a BBE. Um, and that is honestly pretty much it. Not really anything else on, on guitars. I mean, it's already covered in a wall of distortion. This is a very good question, actually. So the next question, what is the most important thing for you in composition? And for me, it's how it all pieces together as one piece of music. So when you listen to film music, you will hear different motifs for different characters. But let's take one character. When they're happy, the motif will play in the major key. It will be fast. When they're sad, it's in the minor key and it's slow. Um, and there's often changes like that, sometimes changes in the way that it's played, tempos and all that sort of stuff. And that's kind of the thing that I like to hear in compositions, things that you can like, oh, that was really, really clever how they brought that back in, but it's slightly different, but it's still, you know, the same thing. And subliminally, you pick up on that when you're listening to a piece of music. So the smaller amount of music that you can actually write, but you can use in a really intelligent way, that's kind of the most important thing for me with composition. How can I write the least amount of music and make everyone understand what's going on in a four minute piece of music, basically, on the first listen? Okay, last question. Favorite modes to write or play in? So when I'm writing music, I tend to write in the Aeolian mode or the minor key, um, and then I'll go between that. Phrygian, Phrygian dominant, um, double harmonic, you guys know what that is the harmonic minor scale as well uh, and it's pretty much centered around those keys um, I occasionally go to Lydian I think with a couple of songs but I tend not to write in major keys because I can never make it sound not cheesy um, so they're the keys that I quite like to write and I mean I would quite like to write in Dorian but again it's one of those things that I just I'm unable to do that but I do love the sound of it so that's the end of my Q&A so now I have a question for you guys now, what gear would you like me to demo on this channel? It can be anywhere from amplifiers, uh, modelers, pedals, you name it. But put it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, check out my teaching website, riffhard.com. It's the only place in the world where you'll find a website dedicated to learning metal, rhythm, guitar. And I promise you, I'm going to turn you into a monster. I've been John Brown. Couldn't really be anyone else, but I'll see you next time.